Thank you for being in these interviews with the Stereophonica. Uh, right now we are with an Australian artist, singer, songwriter, and producer, Driftwood. Thanks for being with us in the Stereophonica. How are you doing? Good, man. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be here chatting with you, bro. Okay, what are you now, right now? I'm actually in New York City. Um, I've been here for uh, a week and a half. Um, I'm recording um, new music with some really uh, great producers and... Um, Yeah, man, I'm in here every day. We're also shooting a, a couple of video clips while we're here and um, just touching the energy out here. It's wild, bro. There is a 2006 horror movie called Driftwood. Have you ever seen it? No, sounds like the story of my life, though. What, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> It's a horror movie. Yeah, I, I was thinking that it was related with your, with your artistical name, but okay, that's okay. No, nah, it's not. It's funny you say that because um, actually all these different... I get all these different people sending me driftwood things and names and I am, yeah, it's a popular name. I didn't know. I thought I was touching on something quite niche when I, when I hit it and uh, apparently not. <laughs> okay. Tell us a little bit about your background. What drives you to become an artist? Yeah, cool. Um, so um, uh, I'm a singer songwriter first and foremost. Um, my background um, is also in production, music production, but, You know, that came about through necessity for me. That was about um, when I was young, I, I couldn't afford to work with the best people to produce what I need to produce. So I just put the hours in myself and then worked my way um, into developing more and more um, of a professional sound over the years. I uh, also went to university to study audio engineering. Um, and um, while I was doing that, I was putting myself I was actually paying for my bills by doing videography on the side. So it was, it was a really perfect storm for me. Um, again, not having the funding, not having the money to then go and shoot my own video clips um, or afford the people I, I really liked. I had to do it myself. So I was running around uh, Sydney with my mates shooting video clips. And, you know, over the space of like 10 years, we just got better and better and better at it. And, um, I was very lucky. One of my mates is, uh, was already a professional and he owned a red camera, which is quite a significant camera. Um, and he mentored me over the years and, um, yeah, it just got better and better and just put in a lot of fucking hours, man, like crazy hours. And, uh, yeah. So, and, and, um, I still got a long way to go. Um, but, um, I think the one thing that stuck, uh, kept me sticking with it was just the love of, Um, creating, I don't know kind of what I'd do without creating. So just kept creating, man. Okay, that's great. Uh, your sound is a mix between R&B and contemporary soul. Are you agree with this or how do you define your sound? Yeah, man, I would say contemporary R&B, electro, hip hop, um, and also influence a lot of other um, aspects that I like into my music. So um, I... I'm just fascinated with aesthetics. I'm trying not to barricade myself in too much. If I, if I love it and I, I feel like it aligns with something I can authentically create, then I will definitely do that. Um, there's a huge, huge, you know, the barriers of genre, or I wouldn't call it, but the guidelines of genres are kind of out the window these days. People are doing this. Everyone's just, you know, cross uh, pollinating every style into each other. And, um, It's a really exciting time, you know, as a creative to kind of learn from other stars and other parts of the world. And I'm trying to do that as much as possible. What are your influences? What influenced your sound? I would say, uh, old, like, it's crazy. Like, some of the stuff I listen to, I don't know if it reflects what I make, but I, I listen to a lot of old gospel. I listen to old Sam Cooke, old B.B. King, old Otis Redding, old Spencer Wiggins. Um, some of the sonics in that and the authenticity and the, just the raw melodies are just unparalleled to me. Um, new Wave, I listen to a lot of hip-hop, a lot of R&B, a lot of new guys who are doing incredible stuff, uh, Electro as well over in Europe. So, yeah, man, like nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, um, but I definitely love going down the rabbit hole and finding new people and new genres and, and uh, exploring vibes. But I'm, I'm definitely... Uh, I definitely love soul and I love things that um, are quite emotive. Okay. Uh, you are promoting right now a single called Bramfields. How was the creating process of this single? It was cool, man. Um, I, it was really interesting. I, 
the video, some of the footage I was sitting on for like six months. So um, I had an idea of the energy and then I finished producing the song. Actually, the, the song was a freestyle, I won't lie. And it was sitting on my hard drive for about a year. And then I came back to it a year later and I was like, you know what, this is kind of interesting because it, it actually talks about like, it, one of the lines is I got people looking for me in galaxies so far away. So I just thought, you know, I, I would love to capture that energy on a song and I finished that and with the help of Dan Vinci and Hunter Farlow, um, they, they brought it to life. Still Greedy featured on it, who's a UK rapper. He, he smashed it out the park. I was, that UK energy is different, man, when you get those guys on it. So I was, I was very blessed to have that. And, uh, and the video was really, really, really special to me. It shows some of the most beautiful locations in Sydney. Um, and we shot it on the red and it was, it was one of my favorite videos I've done today, man. Well, well, you, this is a collaboration with Steve Greedy, a Britain rapper. How was uh, the process of choosing him? Did, did you ever talk to him? Did you hear his music? How, how was it? It was fire, man. It was dope. Like, he's such an incredible, uh, he's so good at what he does that I was just lucky to have the access to him and, and get him on the track. Um, and yeah, just really grateful for the collab. Um, it came through the, the producer who was working on the track, Dan Vici, uh, and chatting to him, you know, he's, He's really respected in his community in England and, um, and he's pushing the bar creatively. So it was a real fluid, easy process, believe it or not. And uh, we did it online over the COVID period. So we had a couple of little hurdles to juggle, but we got it done. We saw a magnificent video. As far as we know it, it was directed and edited by you. Let's talk about a little bit about the aesthetics of the video. Yeah, bro. The video um, directed and edited by me. Super proud of that piece of work. Really proud of the lighting. Really proud of the, 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 I, the people who I'm in the video myself, but there's also three other cast members in the video and um, they're personal friends of mine. And just, you know, the way we shot it, the care it was shot with, the edit took me about, you know, I don't know, the edit took me ages, over six months. Um, I was sitting on some footage for nearly a year. So I really, really took my time with this because I knew what it could be visually. What's next for Driftwood? Um, well, finishing recording here. I've got um, 10 more days in New York. I'm recording. I'm shooting two video clips. I'm shooting something tonight and then later in the week. I'm heading to LA to write and record and work with uh, for two months. Then off to London. We've got a festival I'm playing in London, apparently. Uh, and then um, back to LA to write and record more. And yeah, later in the year, um, I'm excited to play festivals and sh do shows uh, coming into the back end of this year and uh, perform some of this new music I'm creating and, and dropping lots of videos and lots of songs. And I'm actually out here documenting the whole process as well. So hopefully um, I can show people like, you know, behind the scenes, kind of the dirt and the, the, the not so sexy stuff, like the actual day-to-day pro -day process of getting it done. So, yeah. Okay. Are you planning on coming to South America? Probably Colombia? Absolutely, bro. I would love to do that. Um, I, I've actually been so stoked to be even have access to interviews like this and be chatting with people in, um, in Bogota and Mexico and, and, and other parts of Latin America. And um, uh, I think when we get over there, I can't say there's nothing booked at the moment, but I do know we're locked in with um, a really cool group of people that I think are setting some stuff up. So I'm excited to see that happen. And if I get the opportunity to play there, I, I can't wait, man. I love the culture. I love the people over there. Um, I love the food. Uh, I'm just going to get over there and just, um, yeah, just touch life, man. Just get amongst it and see, learn, learn, learn. It'll be, it'll be fun. Cool. Okay. Well, that was it. Thank you for being here with the Stereophonica and keep doing great music, man. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate your time. Great. Thanks, guys. I love it. Okay. Bye-bye. Peace.